Good morning. How is everyone doing? Just waiting for it to load over on YouTube. How's everyone doing this morning? Hey, Andy. Go ahead, type in the chat and let me know that you are here. I am looking sleepy this morning on, on this stream. Apologize. I'm a little sleepy, but not that sleepy. Hoi, Anna. Oh, awesome. Thanks so much, George. Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. We have another special guest coming on the stream today at 930. So I want to make sure that I get into the teaching points before that guest gets here, just because it's a little bit, you know, awkward for the guest to see us teaching. So um, today's date is April 16th, 2020. We are going to be focusing on, let me see if I take this light away. Can you still see? Yeah, you can still see. It's just a little bit dark. So I'm going to face the light this way. That way it's still a little bit light. Okay, that's so much better for me. Okay. Yes, Moises, we are trying to make this a little bit more interactive, which is why we're bringing on lots of guests. Okay, so talking about integrating information from multiple sources. So if any of your friends text you and tell you that they are confused, please make sure that you tell them um, to look at our stream today because I'm going over, hey Axel, I'm going over what is on the, um, in the packet. Okay, so here is my screen and I'm going to be talking about this article today. So in your packet, you have to, oh, thanks, Moises. You have to, sorry, guys, I'm trying to navigate all these screens here. I wish I had um, screens like Ms. Hoffman does, but I don't. Hey, Marlene. Okay. Marlene, have you talked to Anaya? I haven't seen her recently on YouTube. If you have, just um, type it in the chat, and if not, text her and just make sure she's okay. Okay, so we're going to quickly go over what it means to integrate information from multiple sources. So integrate means to bring together. When we're bringing together information, we're bringing together or integrating information from this source and this source. So this source is considered, ooh, what color should I do? Let's do, um, let's do green today. That's Ms. Hoffman's favorite color. So this is considered source number one. And this is considered, that green is not Miss Hoffman's favorite color. Purple is Miss Hoffman's favorite color. I looked at the purple and it felt like it wasn't bright enough. Your chat broke, you can't see it, okay. All right, so um, we have source one and source two. So when we're integrating that information together, we're bringing that info together into um, answer some questions. So after reading both of these, I went ahead and made this chart I thought I made it a little bit better but I don't know I can't see the whole thing let me get off of the um zoom the ultra zoom and make it just a teensy bit smaller because you guys can't see the whole thing okay so you should be able to see most of it yes okay so looking at this chart we've got source one is this one and this is source number two. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna figure out the answers to these questions. The question at the top is telling us how does integrating information from both passages help you to understand Alexander Graham Bell and I believe that's Elisha or Alicia, but we're gonna go with Elisha Gray's work, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna think about what do I already know about both of these people. Well, in the text, it told me, hey, Gloria, hey, Ashley, in the text, it told me that Alexander Graham Bell 
this one, source one, it told me that he was an inventor. So I'm going to insert a text box here so I can type to you that he was an inventor. Bell was the inventor. Let me make that bigger for you so you can see. And as always, I will make sure that I screenshot this and put it up for you on Edsby. So if you're stuck, visit Edsby. I'm also giving you answers once again. Okay. So who was Gray in comparison to Alexander Graham Bell? So if you have done this day in the packet, please answer that question. Who is, is Gray compared to Bell? Not, not Miss Gray, but um, the, in, the person, El, Elisha Gray. Just waiting for the chat to give me some answers. Also, is it raining at your house? Because it's raining here at my house. Gray was. Yes, Gray was an inventor. Um, sure, but you're going to miss, Marlene, you can leave the stream for a little bit, but you're going to miss our special guest. So try to stick around until um at least 8 40 if you can okay so gray was an inventor but he was also an electrical engineer so that's important because that's one step that person has a um more of a history with hey jj um inventions i mean with an uh, um electric Whereas Alexander Graham Bell didn't. Okay, so what is the difference if we're going back to the work that they did? So we're thinking, I'm, and I'm going to leave the last question about why they did it. I'm going to leave that up to you, and I'm going to make you do a poll. I'm going to post the link on Edsby, and I'm going to see if you guys can get it. Okay, so let me um, just go copy. And paste. Okay. So, what work did he do? He Bell pat. Oops, that's all caps. Bell patented, patented, pat, patent, patent. I can't spell this right. Patent. There we go. Patented his. What was the invention that he made? Electronic. Oops. I have an Alexa, and Alexa just thought I was talking to her. Electronic speech machine in 1876. So an electronic speech machine was the original telephone. Yep, that's right. Nice job, guys. So he patented the telephone, essentially. But... What did Gray do? Now, Gray invented the first tele one of the first telephones in 1876. So the difference between these two. So basically, when you're integrating information from different sources, you are just answering some questions or you're bringing that information together. So both of these texts were about the inventions of telephones and the inventors themselves. So when we're bringing together that information, making a list comparing that information will be helpful to our understanding. So Gray invented one of the first telephones in 1876. So it was around the same time, the same year at least, that they both created these inventions. Okay, so this part that says, why did they do it? I'm leaving that up to you. So what I'm going to do is after this stream, I'm going to post a poll on Edsby in the little, um, like a normal journal. I'll post the question. I want you to go on to your pages. Now it's very easy to get to your pages, okay? I want you to go on to your Edsby pages. You're going to go to edsby.com. You're going to log in. 
And once you get there, you're going to go to either Miss Pearl and Britt's homeroom or Miss Hoffman's homeroom. Literally, my question to you is why did Alexander Graham Bell and Alicia Gray invent the first versions of telephones. And I'm going to post to both classes, Ms. Hoffman's homeroom and my homeroom, and I'm going to share it, okay? I want to see your answers. So when you go to answer, guys, you're going to just click on the spot that says reply, and you're going to type your answer in, all right? So I know Raphael knows how to do this because he's replied many a times to my messages. So wherever this answer is, go on and reply to it. I want to see the answers that you put, okay? Thank you so much, Moises and Trolley Vibes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Look, you can see right there the picture of our work from yesterday, too. So let me go ahead and take myself off of that. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in one of my special guests, as always. Are you ready, special guests? One second for that special guest. Okay. All right. Look who it is. It is my partner. Not in crime, but in learning. Miss Hoffman. Miss Hoffman. Hi, friends. Hey, Ramon. Oh, yes. Ramon. She is not the only special guest that will be joining us today. She is not the only guest joining us today. So please stay tuned. Yep, yep, yep. Stay tuned. Okay. So oh. um, I wanted to bring you on today to talk about some of my random facts and um, this day in history. So yeah. Ms. Hoffman actually helped me come up with this day in history. Um, on April, I don't know where Josiah is today, but he's going to be upset that he missed this because yeah. we always have conversations about this. On this day in 2003, Michael Jordan played his final game in the NBA with the Philadelphia, I believe, 76ers. I could be wrong. Or the Washington Wizards. I don't know. I only know... Michael Jordan as a Chicago Bull. I don't know him as anything else. But yes, Michael Jordan played his final game today in 2003. Okay. Also, also, are you ready for this? Because when I tell you this, Ms. Hoffman, you are going to want to jump in a spaceship and fly off. I promise. Before you go on, I think it was the Washington Wizards. Aha, uh -huh. perfect. That makes sense. The Washington Wizards, because he's wearing a Wizards jersey. I think 76ers. I don't know why. This is why I needed Josiah. He never played for the 76ers. Oh, see, there we go. This is, again, why I needed Josiah. Come on, Josiah. We need you. Are you ready for today's random fun fact? Yes, 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 yes. On Jupiter and Saturn, it sometimes rains diamonds. What? On Jupiter and Saturn, it sometimes rains diamonds. So you know that one Rihanna song where she's like, you're beautiful like diamonds in the sky. Well, guess yes. what? On Saturn and Jupiter, there are diamonds. It rains diamonds that's like how do you have the chance of meatballs but the jewelry version yeah we watched a video from crush course kids about that and it was super cool oh look ramon remembers he said i already knew it rains diamonds hoff told us i swear i remember yes so <laughs> cat hair oh gosh First of all, Jory, I could never have it rain diamonds. You are correct with that. But Earth could also never rain diamonds. We need the special atmospheres that those gas giants have. They have a very thick, dense, 
um, gaseous atmosphere that causes the sulfuric acid. Okay, cat hair everywhere. The sulfuric acid and stuff to like compress and do all sorts of fun things. So real quick to just remind us of that, um, Saturn and Jupiter, I could be wrong, but aren't they gas giants? They are gas giants? Okay, perfect. Whew. Phew, I remembered. Thank you. Yeah, they're the gas giants. They're um, outer planets. Yes! You guys, I'm remembering too. I'm so happy. I'm remembering. It's, okay. it's remember, like, even teachers forget things. And Always. My mind sometimes is everywhere. Okay, so something else that we're going to, oops, it's this side. I can't ever get, nope, I, this side. I was right. Okay. So another thing to talk about today is our kindness challenge. Our kindness challenge was given to us by Mrs. Butler yesterday in Ms. Hoffman's stream. And it is to greet the trash or recycle collectors. Now, my trash collectors come on Friday. So probably tomorrow during the stream, I'll probably wave to the trash collectors from my house or I'll open the window and say hi because they usually come around like seven or like for any time from seven to 10 is when they come um, to collect the trash. So I wanna make sure that I'm greeting them and saying thank you to them. Okay, so thanks to Mrs. Butler for giving us our kindness challenge. And then um, we have taking, I'm not taking back Thursday, throwback Thursday. So today's more virtual spirit week is throwback Thursday. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my baby picture. Now it's not my baby, baby picture. It is um, a picture of me when I was young and I was taking a nap on the couch with my dog. That dog's name is Rascal. So I'm going to send this picture off to Miss Snellgrove because it's Throwback Thursday for Virtual Spirit Week. So check it out. There we go. There I am. Just napping on the nap queen right there. All right. Um, we have a special guest. Special guest, are you ready? Just give me a thumbs up if you are. Yes. Okay. Are you ready? This is a person that you have seen at school multiple times. You've seen this person during season's readings. You've seen this person at pep rallies. You've seen this person roaming the halls with Miss Brown. It is the one, the only, Mr. Butler. Hello, everybody. Hey, Mr. Butler, how are you? Hi. I am wonderful, Miss Perone. How are you? Uh, we're great. So you know, Miss Perone, and then next to me is my partner, Miss Hoffman. She teaches math and science. Um, so we have about seventeen students on today viewing our stream. Um, awesome. Yeah. So we've had uh, probably about anywhere from fifteen to twenty-five students um, each day. I would say the average. Um, the platform that we are using has about a 10 second delay on the comments. So when the kids are asking you specific questions, it might take a couple of seconds for them to come through on your end. But we'll try our best to moderate them for you. Wonderful. So for those kids that haven't gotten to experience um, the magic of Mr. Butler, can you please explain your job, what you do, um, to those kids that haven't been able to come and visit at Vistra? I can try to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think some of them might know that I spent 22 years in the Army, traveling around the world, uh, commanded troops in combat, I worked in the White House, and then I came to Tampa and decided it was time for me to get a real job. So I started... <laughs> So I started a company and, and today we have about 90 employees, about 35 of them are in our headquarters in Lutz. And I know some of the students have been in our headquarters a couple of times. Uh, and a lot of the folks that are in our headquarters also come over to Mort 
and they read to you guys and they volunteer in the library and they do other things that this crowd has us to do uh and they're in the classroom so that's that's pretty awesome but our company uh designs public relations campaigns and marketing materials you know and i'll give you an example of something we, we've been doing right now uh for those of you that know where albany georgia is Albany is one of the hardest hit areas with this pandemic. And because we have been doing work in Albany for several years ago, uh, we got involved right up front and developed a campaign and public service announcements and things to help try to get some more doctors and nurses and medical supplies into Albany. And we worked with the United Way and a really big church called Sherwood Baptist Church in Albany to uh, help them to raise money by, uh, you know, creating ads online to get people to donate and rallying the community together. So a lot of our team, even though we have our own challenges right here in Tampa, we knew that we needed to go out and help somebody else. That's so wonderful. That's a lot of um, what we've been talking about that connects to our... It sounds silly in our efforts, but our kindness challenges. So each day we're um, having a different challenge for kids to help out with people around the house, their family members and things like that, because we know that especially at this time, there a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of um, anxiety, maybe. Uh, kids are worried and kids are stressed and, and their families are too. So, um, we want to make sure that we're doing everything that we can while staying from home and um, staying at home and staying safe. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so important to always practice being kind. And it's, it's just so easy to be kind, you know, whether you're being kind to your, you know, your brothers and sisters or you're being kind to your parents or you're, you know, you're, you're volunteering to do something for them right now. And it can be something as small as just writing them a note or a letter and letting them know, letting them know that you love them and appreciate them because this is hard for everybody. And I know it's especially hard for fifth graders <laughs> to really yeah. understand and comprehend what's going on uh, and the magnitude of this big, big effort. Now, I just got off a conference call uh, with some other business leaders in Tampa and United Way and others and what they really talked about is uh, is how important it is for all of us to work together right now and help each other and there was a uh, the, the general manager for the Tampa Bay Lightning was on the call and he talked about some of the things that the Lightning and the Bucks and the Rays are doing for others in this community right now so and I know some of those things are happening right over by Mort so you know so it, that's very exciting that the things that they were talking about really impact you know all of you and all of us yeah i know we've had a, a couple of times we've had feeding tampa bay they've come with their produce truck to more to get out fresh produce and i know that's um the rays are uh, big with the um organization the, or the rays organization is a big partner with feeding tampa bay because we the teachers went to volunteer over there and pack some, we packed potatoes, stuffed bags of potatoes that day, and it was all baseball themed. Right, uh, Suncoast Federal Credit Union was also on the phone, and they talked about a partnership that they just did with some matching dollars to create some more money for Feeding Tampa Bay so they can bring more of those produce trucks out and more food in awesome. the neighborhood. So that was really, really good and important. That is so awesome. Well, Mr. Butler, we have some questions for you. Hi, oh, I hope they're easy questions. So did you get to talk to the president when you went to the White House? Wow, uh, yes, I did. I talked to the president, not every day, only a couple times, but because the president's really busy. Uh, but I was in a couple meetings with the president when I worked in the White House. And, and probably my funniest story, it was a really serious story, but it's kind of funny now. Looking back at it, I, I had been working on a presentation for the president, and I thought I was going to get a chance to go in and talk to him in his office. And my boss came to get me and he said, you're going to walk with the president 
from the rose garden out towards the helicopter. You're going to have about 17 seconds <laughs> to tell him what he needs to know. <laughs> wow. So me and my boss walked with the president of the United States as he was leaving the door and we walked and I talked really quickly and gave him the information. And he just looked at me and he said, thank you. That was very helpful. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's crazy. So little reading on the reading aspect, boys and girls, when I've asked you to write 10, a summary in 10 or 20 words or less, that does come in handy in the real world in Mr. Butler's case, when he had to talk to the president in 18 seconds. Yes. And I actually gave my staff uh, a, a writing assignment last week. And I broke, I broke them in teams of three or four people, and they had to write a blog about how the this whole uh, pandemic is impacting them and how we work with our, our customers, which is very, very important. And I gave them a limit of 250 words. At the first round, half of them failed. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. They got to redo it. Oh my gosh. But that's part of the process. Is part of the process of learning is that first failure and seeing that you need to do it again and try and be your best. You have to fail in order to succeed. And, and the second time they said, okay, we'll do this. And, and they all did really well. But, but they were giving me a hard time because they kept saying, we're not in school anymore. <laughs> we're always in school. <laughs> We're always, I'm always learning. We're always in school. That is so true. Um, Ariana wants to know, how did you come up with the name for your company? Oh, oh, great question. So the way I think about things is generally the way I do things. So I think about things in terms of having a vision, developing a strategy, and then acting upon those things to, to get things done. So I ended up, I was in church one 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 day doodling on my 3x5 cards because I generally always carry 3x5 cards. So I put those three words together, vision, strategy, and action. And that's how I came up with the word Vistra. Oh, wow. I see it now. That's so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Um, okay, next question is from the House of Courage president, also known as Jordan. So he got to visit you. Hey, Jordan. Um, which presidents did you get to talk to? So I worked with uh, George W. Bush, but I've also spoken with Bill Clinton when he was the president. I spoke with... Um, uh, Donald Trump, our current president, and, and George Bush's father. I spoke to him as well. And I, and I went to when when President Bush was laying it in, in uh, after he after he died last year, and his his body his remains were in the state capitol. I flew up and and. Uh, and a friend allowed me to come into the U.S. Capitol and be in there where his body laid in state. So that was that was pretty special for me. That is really, really cool. And that just goes to show you, boys and girls, all of those presidents are from different political parties. But when you go and you talk with someone, it doesn't matter what their political affiliation mm -hmm. is or anything like that. It's more of the conversation that you have with people. Right. And that is um, so important. Thank you. Gloria wants to know how many Vistras are built all around the world. <laughs> Gloria is the House of Determination president, so she also got to come and hey, visit. Gloria. <laughs> how are you, Gloria? Gloria, we, we have two offices. We have the one in Tampa, which you came and visited, in Lutz, actually. And we have another office uh, just outside of Washington, D.C., uh, and if it, I'm supposed to be up there right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, so, but I haven't been able to go up there in the last two months. So I hope to get up there sometime next month in May 
or at least by June, because I miss going up there. And I and I usually spend about a week, a month, uh, in that office in DC. That's really cool. It must is it hard to manage traveling back and forth from Tampa to Washington DC so frequently? Yeah, I, I probably spend uh, fourteen to to twenty days a month traveling. Wow. Uh, between uh, being in Washington, D.C., we have some employees down in Miami, so I'm down there. Uh, we have employees in Chicago and a couple other places, and we do business in Dallas and in Houston. So I, most months, I'm on the road for at least two weeks and sometimes almost two weeks. So, uh, But I do everything the way you're doing it right now, using technology. Really? That's so cool. Yeah, I stay in touch with my employees every day between my cell phone and my iPad and my laptop and in my in my my, my uh, condominium or my townhouse in North Virginia. I have the same office set up as I have here in Lutz uh, with computers. So I use technology every day, just like you're using it now to, to keep myself informed and, and to stay connected with our, with our team members. That is so cool. Yeah. Mr. Butler, I know that you are one of the, I guess, a founding member of the CEOs in schools um, movement, I guess, um, here in Hillsborough County. Can you tell us a little bit about that so um, the kids can kind of understand why, you know, we have so many business partners that come in to visit around our school so frequently? Well, thank you. You know, I love that program. And I actually came up with that with the idea for that program after spending a couple of years working in Mork and spending time in your classroom and spending time with Mr. Johnson and him showing me around. And one day I said to Mr. Johnson, I know I'm always in here and probably in your way, you know, an hour at a time. But do you think I could spend a whole day in the school one day? Because I would like to learn more about what's really happening in the school and engage with students more and better understand the challenges that the teachers and staff have. So Mr. Johnson and Ms. Brown uh, put an agenda together and I spent the whole day at work one day, Ms. Uh, Ms. Brown, I don't know if you remember that. I do. I was so tired at the end of the day. <laughs> I was just, I actually went home and took a nap. <laughs> it is the truth. <laughs> but all the weekend, I kept thinking, wow, this was so important. And I went back and thought about it. And that's what, that's why I put the CEOs of schools program together. Because I thought, what would it be like if, if the CEOs in our community each came and spent one full day in an elementary school. How much better would our community be if they better understood some of the challenges and they got to know some of the students and they became mentors. And we did the program last year for the first time. And we had a CEO in every elementary school in the county, which is like a 170 elementary schools. Yes. And and we're already planning to do the same thing this fall. So, it, and those CEOs have done and are doing some remarkable things in elementary schools all over the county because of that. So That's so you. awesome. Thank you for asking that question. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important. Kids, especially at Mort, are always seeing different um, business members or community members coming into our school. So I thought it was important that they know, you know, why, what, what is the purpose behind that? Aside from, you know, the ways that they support Mort with, um, you know, resources and things like that, but also for them to understand that, you know, just as much as they're in school learning that you're in school learning about you know us and what we do every day so we're learning about your job and you're learning about our job kind of a thing and your classroom is always so exciting to come into so i always look forward to it but i'm all, also always nervous when i come in your classroom too why because i know you're going to put me on the spot like this time, I came in your classroom, and the next thing I know, I was teaching the class. I had no idea what I was doing. And I was sure the kids were laughing at me. 
Uh, I had so much fun. Oh, they probably were just laughing with you, not at you, Mr. Butler. <laughs> um, one more last question sure. from Gloria. Well, also, I do want to recognize that Freddie Butler is here. He is the president of the House of Respect, and he wants to recognize that you and him have the same last name. I remember meeting Freddie Butler, and, and so we need to dig a little deeper because we're probably cousins. <laughs> <laughs> Only Freddie. But Gloria wants to know, why did you pick this particular job? Uh, Gloria, that's a really good question. Uh, I actually think this job picked me, Gloria. Uh, when I retired from the Army and came to Tampa, I actually could not find a job. So I, I had gone to college, I had two master's degrees, and I moved to Tampa and couldn't find a job. So I was a little bit discouraged. And then one day it hit me, uh, actually I started doing some consulting and then, and I was complaining a lot and my wife told me to stop complaining. Uh, <laughs> and one day it hit me, what if I just started my own job? I always wanted to own a business ever since I was a kid. You know, I was a paper boy, I bagged groceries, I always had a job and I thought, wouldn't it be cool to start your own company? So I started the company in 2007. Uh, right out of our house because I, I literally couldn't find a job. And today we, we've we taken the company and done so many neat things with it and hired so many people and, and gotten involved with Mort and other, some other schools and the laundry project in Tampa and all kinds of things. So the company, so picking this particular job has really allowed me to, to give back with the gifts that God gave me uh, in a meaningful way. Thank you so much for answering that. Um, the last part of our segment is we shout out an essential hero a day. So just to give you some examples, we've shouted out Miss Brown's sons because they both work at Publix. Um, we shouted out Mr. Reyes' wife, Joy Reyes, who works at Advent Health in the radiology department. She's the director of ancillary services. And um, today we wanted to shout out Miss Snellgrove's daughter who works um, as part of Lowe's. She's, um, she does something with cybersecurity, I think. I could be wrong, with Lowe's. So um, Mr. Butler, do you have any essential heroes that you would like to shout out? Yes, I do. I took my head right. off for a second. I had to ask my wife a question. <laughs> uh, our IT directors, uh, his wife is a is a nurse, is a uh, respiratory therapist actually. Oh wow! And so she is front line and helping to save lives. Uh, her name is Jody. Uh, so Jody Stillo is my hero. And I knew she was a respiratory therapist, but Tom shared a couple weeks ago what they have to do every day when she comes home. She, she undresses in the garage. They have put their house into two sections. Wow. A clean and sterile section and another section where she comes in, takes a shower, cleans everything, and maybe puts it in the laundry room uh, and puts on another set of clothes and then goes into the clean section of the house. And they've been doing this, you know, for the last month. So, and I knew she was a respiratory therapist, but I had no idea of, of the things they had to do to help keep each other safe. Uh, but she is my hero and she's doing it with a smile. That's beautiful. Well, we put her on our shout out wall for her. So our stream today will be dedicated to Miss okay. and Miss Snellgrove's daughter, Lindsay. So and Mr. Uh, Mr. Stillo actually came over and helped put your electric wall up that's in the hallway at Mort. Oh, wow. <laughs> so our TV wall. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he was okay. involved. <laughs> Look at that. Wow, like what a connection. So
um, Miss Jody's husband is the person that installed the walls of TV Boys and Girls um, by our cafeteria. So he helped with all of the electrical work there. Yes, Moises says hashtag shout out to Miss Jody. <laughs> Please do. Please do. Well, we thank you so much for joining us today, Mr. Butler. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? No, I, I just say, you know, be kind and be encouraged. This won't last forever. You know, I know it seems like a long time, but, you know, take advantage of this and do something that you enjoy doing as part of learning and let your minds work and, you know, you know discover something that you not that you don't know a lot about. Learn something and use this time because I'm trying to do that every day. Uh, I still, I'm still trying to learn something every day. And while I'm working out of my house right now, I have been going to the office a little bit, but I don't allow anybody to come into the office. Uh, so, so it's important for everybody to be home with their families right now. So. You have the same advice as your wife gave. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, to take time to learn yeah. something new. <laughs> That's good. Well, thanks That's good. again. We're so happy and so excited that you could join us, you and Mrs. Butler, taking time out of your busy schedules and work days to stop into our virtual classroom for the day. <laughs> well, thank you so much for all this happening. But I got to share one more thing. So we've been married like 33 years, and we've never worked in the same office together. Oh, and boy. We're sitting right here next to each other all day, every day. So, uh <laughs> Uh oh, somebody's sneaking up behind me. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Butler. I can imagine. It's been definitely a, a change of pace having um, our pets, our our interns. That's what we call them. So my dog's my intern, and Miss Hoffman's cats are her intern. Yep. Love it. Love it. Thank, thank you. Thank you all for what you're doing uh, to help keep uh, our our children and kids encouraged and. And I know this is not the easiest thing you've ever done, but guess what? It's probably not the hardest either. You are correct. Yep. You are correct. Oh, that's so awesome. Gloria wants to tell, let you know that she, right now she's working to be an engineer and an inventor. Oh, my goodness. That's pretty awesome, Gloria. Well, yes. you, ought to, you ought to be reading everything you can about being an engineer. Mm -hmm. Especially cool. being a female in engineering right now. We need more girls in STEM jobs. There you go. Yes. We sure do. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks again. We are so happy that you joined us today. Thank you for having me at any time. Of course. Yeah. All right. We will talk to you soon, okay? Bye. 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 Well, Ms. Hoffman, another incredible day we had today. We had. We learned so much talking about integrating information from multiple sources. Mm -hmm. We talked about Michael Jordan's last game that he played. We learned about, well, they already knew, but I didn't. So it was new learning for me. It rains diamonds on Jupiter and Saturn. Hello, I want to be there. Well, it's raining. It's raining liquid water right now here in Florida. Yeah. So it's I feel like diamonds would be better, but you know. Um, remember, inspired by Mrs. Butler, our kindness challenges to greet the recycle and trash collectors. And finally, as a part of Virtual Spirit Week, we want you to go out and um, not go out, sorry. We want you to send us a baby picture. We want you to send us a baby picture. And I'm going to try to get my intern now. She is very sleepy. Stella. My intern is just sitting on a bunch of fabric that I'm going to be sewing later on today. I kind of want to shout out a couple people telling us what they want to be when they grow up. Like, I was just thinking that too as I was getting Stella, I saw that. I just, I like, I love all the things that you guys want to do. And you can do it if you put your mind to it. Just like Mr. Butler. Remember, he got discouraged because, you know, he couldn't find a job, but he stopped and he thought, and he like, I can work hard, I have all of these skills, and I can go on and do the things like being a vet, a marine biologist, um, engineer, working at an animal shelter, those types of things. All of those things. So I was sorry, I was just trying to get Stella to wake up a little bit more. I had to, uh, I had to. Ooh. 
Oh, looks like this pro and internet went out again. It's okay, guys. I got some Sven action here. You're going to build a company, Gloria? That's Everyone, the oh. internet will come back. There we it will is. come back. My internet does this. Okay, and we're back. Sorry again, my internet. They're working on it. Okay, so um, last but not least, we always want to end our um, stream with our sign-off. So we have our interns here. We want to tell you air hugs, air hugs, and snuggles from our pets, from our homes to yours. We love you. We miss you. Oh, and I forgot, um, Miss Hoppin, on your stream, can we do the poll about what time they want to meet tomorrow? Sounds good. To do this, but um, can I know I want to keep the interns too. Um, so don't forget to go on to Edsby and answer my question. I posted it on both of the pages. I miss you guys so much. Miss Hoffman misses you. We will see you at 11.45 for Miss Hoffman's stream. So, ciao for now. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Bye, guys. Bye.